Hello, I'm John Grom, and welcome to the 14th Right and Left Discussion Forum. Right and Left is a nonprofit company that was incorporated in Ohio in August of 2012 and is currently awaiting tax exempt status from the IRS. Right and Left is a grassroots effort to promote political civil civility. Our goal is to reduce the level of extreme partisanship by urging citizens to abandon biases that stand in the way of solving problems. We believe that civil disagreement is a requirement of a healthy self-government that can only be achieved through respectful relationships. To promote civility, we are establishing a right and left chapter in Wadsworth that will be used as a template for chapters in other cities. Each chapter will have an active presence in its community with a speakers bureau, a local access TV program, visibility at local events, an aggressive advertising campaign, and a fundraising effort. Additionally, we will have an interactive website promoting political civility with an endorsable belief statement, a regular newsletter, and a capacity for the exchange and dissemination of ideas. Plus, we plan a multimedia advertising effort that will use the lion's share of our budget. Our discussion forum is aimed at showing that being right is not as important as the relationships we have with our fellow citizens that enable us to share this country and solve problems together. Today's discussion panel, beginning on my left, is Dr. Ronald Chamberlain, retired senior research chemist, and uh, recently, this week, celebrating uh, with his lovely wife, Lois, their 53rd wedding anniversary. Right. On his left is Jerry Ritzman, vice president and partner with Ritzman Pharmacies. On his left is Patty Haskins, retired math teacher from Wadsworth High School, and Democratic member of the Wadsworth City Council. On her left is Brian Lawbaugh, president of R&B Financial Services and member of the Medina County Republican Executive Committee. Today our panel will discuss the question, is our constitutional right of privacy being threatened and is it worth sacrificing in the name of security? Ron, in the past few weeks we have learned that the federal government is collecting metadata on all domestic phone calls as well as gaining direct access to internet search histories, emails, file transfers, social media, and other online activity. Ron, would you please explain what metadata is and do you feel this is an intrusion into our privacy in the name of security and is it a game changer for our freedoms? John, meta, the term metadata has a number of meanings in this particular case. It's data about data. And it's a little complex to understand in this case, but I, I, I thought I'll take the liberty to be slip into professorial mode here and give you a little bit of history. Uh, starting about in the early 1970s, NSA, the National Security Agency, was began tapping the international uh, undersea phone cables. They didn't need a warrant for that. That's their job. They're spies. That's what they do. However, in parallel with this, the FBI was also engaging in wiretapping in the domestic scene. Well, 1975, the Church Committee, for Frank Church uh, Congressional Committee, put a stop to that. It now requires the FBI to have a warrant if they're going to tap your phone. Uh, however, <coughs> the NSA still continued this practice. Now, in the uh, aftermath of 9-11, George W. Bush signed a secret agreement to allow the SF NSA to, without a warrant, to begin wiretapping civilians internationally and nationally. Uh, 2007, he stopped that program, but started one uh, called instead the Protect America Act. Um, never heard of it, but that in, in 2007. Now, Wiretapping still continued on, but what NSA has to do, they have to uh, submit their general plan to a secret court in Washington, D.C., which then signs off on it. No individual warrants are required now. They can say, um, let's just 
we're, we're going to look at uh, this this situation with these uh, with this organization. We don't have to have an interval of war for that over a period. They do this, you know, on, mm -hmm. on an annual basis. Uh, President Obama was against this as a candidate. However, since being elected, he has endorsed it, uh, figuring that <coughs> you have to sacrifice a little secure, a little uh, freedom in order to be secure. Uh, now, recently. It's come out that there's a top secret NSA program called uh, technically US 98XN, but this is known as PRISM, and you have heard that term. Uh, begin looking at, uh, at emails and, and other communications uh, in, in foreign, foreign uh, aspects of uh, what's being sent to Pakistan or Afghanistan or Iraq. And, uh, going to the companies like Microsoft, because at that particular time when they started, this was the biggest provider of emails. Now it's probably Google or somebody. But, uh, and the employees uh, had <coughs> compiled this data by hand and took it a lot of time. They called it hoovering. Not by the vacuum cleaner, but J. Edgar <coughs> was known to do quite a bit of wiretapping and, mm -hmm. and surveillance of individuals. Mm -hmm. So looking at the internet now, is a very complex interconnected situation. If, a, if an email is being sent between Pakistan and Afghanistan, say, that might come through San Francisco hmm. before it gets to where it's going. It's all an interconnected node and, and uh, the software takes advantage of the quickest and, uh, and, and, and clearest uh, pathway to send that. Mm -hmm. So what happens is by monitoring these systems, domestic emails is, are also monitored for in U.S. citizens without any specific warrant, but mm -hmm. just a general, a general sort of warrant. Uh, now, excuse me, anything that would go through some type of a central channel, um, you, you say it could be among two foreign uh, it sources and it, it would run through, through, run through the U.S. And, and anything that goes through that U.S. channel could be monitored. It is monitored because hmm. that's where we're being, that's where it is being monitored okay. on the on the networks <coughs> in this country. Yeah. Uh, yeah. San Francisco specifically, much of it mm -hmm. comes into the country in yeah. San Francisco. Now, uh, <coughs> what sort of can happen here, uh, the PRISM is then a, a, a computer program that much like a PRISM takes a single ray of light and splits it into any many, uh, many strands, this program takes the many strands of data and combines it into unified categories. And uh, for example, and then what happens specifically here is that if, if an individual or an organization is targeted, NSA gets their entire inbox. Hmm. This means that any person or any other contacts within this inbox can also be investigated, all without warrant, all without any additional warranty. So the question is asked, if you have this vacuum mass of data, can you take that and, and this is where the term metadata comes in, combine that into looking at an individual, to looking at a specific instance? And this is the concern here then. Can you go from this general data to specific data? And yes, you can. Uh, it requires massive computer uh, power. The supercomputers could be used. They probably aren't going to do a lot of it. It's time consuming, it's expensive but it can be done. Mm -hmm. So, is it a game changer? Well, the, the libertarian and the American, the ACLU member in me says, let's keep the government out of this. The liberal in me says, well, the government needs to protect us. That's what one thing we wanted the government for. So where is the balance? Is it a game changer? I think it's only a game changer if we let it go on without transparency, without knowing who's doing it, without knowing why they're doing it, and without knowing where, whether it's being done to us. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't think that that's <coughs> going to give the terrorist any advantage. The terrorists are going to keep using the email. The terrorists are going to keep using, uh, go back to carrier pigeons, I suppose. That's not very efficient these days. So I think it can be a game changer. But I think it's only a game changer if we, if we do not take control of it if we do not ask our government to be transparent. But I think mm -hmm. it needs, in some sense, needs to be done. Jerry, there's a balance that we're trying to strike these days between security and privacy and all right. that. Where, what, what is your thinking? Well, my thinking is, is before people wade in on this topic, they might 
take some time and read the Constitution and the amendments that they quote and stand on uh, and spend some time trying to understand them. I know I have not, and I probably should do that. Uh, the balance, you know, I think we might be somewhat idealistic in uh, thinking how much privacy we have and how much privacy we want to uh, preserve. Uh, <coughs> I think that there's not a lot of privacy out there, uh, even at this point, mm -hmm. uh, that, can, that w things about us that, that can be found out that we really don't know on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, so I, 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 it's a tough uh, balance. I would just look at a couple, I was on vacation last year in the library in the house that we stayed in, there was a copy of 1984, which I hadn't read mm. for years. And I read that and it was almost chilling, the things that they <laughs> did, the because <laughs> it is. It's like, I don't know if I was reading the newspaper or I was reading this novel, the, the information that they were gathering. Other, other novel like that, of course, is uh, Brave New World. Some of the things that go on in there, uh, we would think that this would be the government imposing upon people. We're actually doing a lot of those things Mm -hmm. parallel to those things to ourselves. Uh, I, would, I would have to lean on the side of, uh, of privacy rather than protection. Uh, mm -hmm. and, uh, but we need to inform ourselves before we make our stand. Okay. Patty, let me ask you a question. I know that you're raring to go on this topic, but um, the, uh, I had a conversation with, in the, this past week. Uh, thinking about a Ben Franklin quote, and uh, he said, those who would sacrifice freedom for security deserve neither. Would you agree with that? Yes and no, I guess. Um, <laughs> you know, if you were to sacrifice all of your freedom for security, I mean, I, I can think of many totalitarian governments <clears throat> that are very secure, and mm -hmm. they've so sacrificed all of their you know, the residents have sacrificed all of their mm -hmm. freedoms for it. No, definitely. You're not going to sacrifice all of your freedoms for security. Um, I, I'm not sure, however, if listening into conversations or doing certain tapings, if it protects us from terrorist activities, I don't think that that is eliminating our freedom. Uh, because we still, fortunately, have the Constitution to look back on. You know, the Constitution is interesting because if you look at all of the amendments that uh, give us our freedom, whether it's, you know, right to, you know, free speech, the right to own a gun, uh, freedom of the press, uh, the right not to, you know, have um, unreasonable search and seizure, mm -hmm. all of these different things <clears throat> are the rights that are spelled out in mm -hmm. there. It does not say that you have privacy, though, in all matters. Um, I, I, we were discussing earlier, I think the Ninth Amendment has been used quite often uh, in certain areas to grant privacy on issues that were not foreseen by the founders of the Constitution. Mm -hmm. I mean, obviously, the founders could not foresee cell phones, the internet, um, do you, um, do you remember offhand the, the essence of the Ninth Amendment? The Ninth Amendment states that you cannot be denied by the limitations on the first or the first eight amendments any other rights that you might retain. Mm -hmm. So the justices have looked at that and said, okay, these amendments do not spell out this right. However, we feel that this may be one of the rights that the founders were looking at, and therefore you have that right to, to mm -hmm. do that particular thing. And mm -hmm. it has been used in some of the landmark <coughs> yeah. cases, and I believe it was cited when the 14th Amendment was put into play, which is the uh, right of you know, life, liberty type mm -hmm. of, of, of grant that we have, mm -hmm. and has been used in many cases since then. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, I agree with Ron that uh, it's, you know, there's part of me that says, I don't want the government going through my emails. And, and it's not because I really put anything in there that shouldn't be read by anyone. I just <laughs> don't like the idea of someone doing it. But yet I do see the need for it as far as security. I think what we need to do is have better oversight, though, 
over, whether it's the NSA or whoever is doing uh, the tapping <clears throat> in and the listening and what they're doing with the data that should be done by Congress. There hasn't been the transparency as of yet. Many are just now finding out about these things. And, and someone does need to be a watchdog. Uh, you mentioned uh, the, um, in some cases with the warrants, there mm -hmm. has to be an approval of it. They're always approved. They, they're never okay. turned down, ever. I can't believe that every request, hmm. every request was needed. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Brian, can I lay a question on you? Sure. All right. Uh, I, I put a Ben Franklin quote on Patty. I'm going to lay mine on you. Okay. Those who would sacrifice security for freedom would lose both. Would you agree with that? Um, no, no, I don't think I would. Mm -hmm. um, the, the problem I have with what's just been disclosed is that um, there really hasn't been transparency. Mm -hmm. And it's all been done in the name of security. And it really troubles me when there's sort of a star chamberish court that's secret mm -hmm. that we don't know about. Mm -hmm. um, I, I guess the libertarian in me would come out when uh, some agency of the federal government has the right without warrant mm -hmm. to search anything uh, of anyone's. Uh, it didn't stop the two individuals in Boston from doing what they were doing, and mm -hmm. I think that's the latest example <coughs> of, of these particular types of things. Whatever data it is, made it or whatever, I, I think that the government should should follow the same rules that a normal corporation. Every year an individual mm -hmm. gets a privacy statement. And mm -hmm. that corporation can't, you know, use that information, they can't share it, you know, they can't sell it. Um, and uh, it, it's troubling just the things that we've found out in the last month and a half in regards to the measures that the government has gone to, to, in my words, spy on people. You know, we have the news mm -hmm. reporter that was, uh, mm -hmm. uh, pretty much uh, brought up as far you know his his emails and contacts within the within the uh, within the government were suspect you know that that whole thing can really spin out of control mm -hmm. rather quickly I go back to that movie I don't know if you've ever seen it called enemy of the state with Gene Hackman and oh yeah um, good movie <laughs> yeah um, Will Smith well, yeah and some of the things in there uh, that they show, I'm sure we're doing them today. You know, wiretapping people's phones, picking off conversations.